guys and welcome back to the 2023-24 SDPN NHL season previews. Next up, we have the Stanley Cup runner-up in the Florida Panthers, a team that miraculously came out of nowhere, got that second wild card spot and exploded in the playoffs. Can they repeat the magic they had last year? Well, let's find out by dissecting their entire offseason to see what's next. But before we get into the preview, let's first shout out our sponsor today in Sports Interaction. Given the action to make your bet with Sports Interaction, the MLB season is heading towards a close and a lot of good storylines there, especially around the Blue Jays. Bet before the game or live and in play with all your favorite teams. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN or download the app to get started. 19 plus please play responsibly. Now this Florida Panthers team is in a weird spot. Considering Ekblad and Montour are going to be gone for the start of the season due to injuries and surgeries, the Florida Panthers offseason was in complete peril and they had to change their game plan completely. Now when we go to the additions they made this offseason, the first forward addition and really the only big forward addition was Evan Rodriguez. So they acquired on a pretty big multi-year deal, but a solid deal for them, honestly. Even though he is 30 years old, he's been producing at a great rate in these last two seasons, 43 points in 82 games last year. And with Colorado was fantastic for them, 39 points in 69 games. And maybe as a player that plays on maybe a top line as a complimentary play piece, could be pretty interesting in five points in seven games in consecutive years. That's not too shabby either. Then you go on to the defensive additions, and it was a lot. First, you have Oliver Ekman Larson, who was bought out by the Canucks. The Florida Panthers end up getting him and signing him. He, of course, has not had the greatest seasons with Vancouver, but it's interesting. Once Ek bought a Montour back, I could see a situation where he does decently on that middle pair, perhaps. He was thrown to the Wolves in Vancouver and was absolutely eaten up. And we'll see if anything is different in Florida. You also got Nico Mikola, who was a blue and then a Ranger, a part of the Tarasenko deal. Did pretty well with the Rangers in a defensive role there. Could do the same in Florida. You also got Dmitry Kulikov brought back by Florida. But as you can see, again, kind of a trend. It's just a lot of guys. And then you guys also got Mike Riley, who was another player that was on a team that didn't really use him all that much. In Boston, they gave him a big contract, didn't really play him that much afterwards. He's a player, though, that offensively could be really interesting in a bigger role. But again, as you see, a lot of guys that could fill positions but not a lot of sure bets. They're really banking on these D coming up in a big way and filling spots within the lineup. Now, in terms of the losses, the big forward one really, I guess, was Patrick Hornquist, even though he retired and really wasn't much of a loss. I mean, this last year had three points in 22 games. The writing was definitely on the wall, but a fantastic career there. The biggest, biggest loss for the Florida Panthers this season was without a doubt, Radko Gudis. Going to the Anaheim Ducks on a multi-year deal, $4 million, absolutely deserved. But he's a player that was instrumental to that Panther success these last playoffs, really just in the regular season the last few years. Really underrated as a great physical defensive defenseman and could also pop a couple of goals here and there, a few assists. Not going to be the offensive D-man that is going to revolutionize everything, but he knew his role. And I mean, for Florida, they got a ton of, of defensemen. They got, of course, OEL. They got a ton of guys. Nobody on Radko Gudis's level, though. A lot more quantity rather than quality on D. Now, when we look at the players to watch, the first one that really comes to mind here is Anton Lindell, my boy, 12th overall back in 2020. And these last couple of years have been solid for him in the playoffs, though he was fantastic for Florida in a great role. 10 points in 21 games and defensively was fantastic. He's a player that has all the potential in the world, has shown great offensive capabilities. That defensive game has also come into the NHL and has been effectively efficient. He's a player that could be a fantastic two-way center right behind Barkov, and he's a player that I really hope breaks out in a big way this next year. Now on to my second player to watch, and this is really a D-man that is going to get a lot of responsibility of Montour and Ekblad out for the start of the season. is going to be relied upon a lot and needs to succeed if Florida's going to have a good season. And that is Gustav Forsling, who has had a couple of great seasons for the Florida Panthers in the playoffs this year as, as well. Eight points in 21 games, and the defensive role was fantastic. One of the more quiet, underrated two-way D in league here, but he is going to also get thrown to the Wolves. We'll see if he's able to sink or swim because he really has a lot of responsibility coming up. And then going on my third player to watch, next up I have young goaltender Spencer Knight, who had to go to the NHL assistance program and thankfully has gone out of it, hopefully is all good to go. He's a player that over the last couple of years has had some good moments for the Panthers, but hasn't been able to really put it all together. He's still extremely young at 22 years old, but he's a player that with Stolarz as the backup, 
I think could win that backup position, get back to the NHL level consistently, hopefully be around a 9-10 save percentage, really show that talent that he has. And to me, I think especially giving Bobrovsky that breathing room in the regular season will be vital for the Panthers and their goaltending tandem. But let's go through grade the Panthers forwards, defense, and goaltending. And we're going to start here with the four group, and it's looking pretty solid. Of course, if you're able to stay healthy with all these guys, that top nine is amazing. And hopefully we'll see Grig Grigory Danosenko take a big step. Anton Lindell as well, having a huge breakout year. Evan Rodriguez in that top line could be really interesting. Of course, you've still got great players like Lurston Ryan and Verhage, Bennett, Barkov, Reinhardt, Kachuk. A lot of options. And that depth isn't bad either. I give the Panthers an A. It's honestly one of the better four groups when healthy. And that's what's most important. But now let's move on to the defense. And uh, oh boy, is, is uh, this going to be interesting <laughs> to start out this season. With Eggblad and Montour gone, any team that loses their two best D is obviously going to be in a tough spot. For the Panthers, they're no exception. But as we saw, the four defensemen they acquired could be the four defensemen suiting into the lineup on that bottom and middle pairs. Now you got Forsling and Mahura on that top for now, which I think is underrated for sure. Both Forsling and Mahura have shown great things for the Panthers. But as your top pairing, it's not exactly ideal for them. And they're going to be eating a lot of minutes that they haven't eaten in the past. And to me, I think for the Panthers, there could be a little bit of a struggle at the start of the season, getting that defense into shape. I think by the time it does reacquire Ekblad and Montour, it'll be fantastic. As of right now, I'm going to give it a D plus. But when Ekblad and Montour are back, I'm going to give it a straight A. Honestly, like we saw in the playoffs, it's a defense that is still fantastic, even with Gudis gone. And then we go into the goaltending, which right now is Bobrovsky and Stolarz, though, of course, Spencer Knight could win that backup position. The depth is very strong there. If one guy goes, you can bring in Spencer Knight, and that's fantastic. And that depth definitely raises it up a bit. Obviously, Bobrovsky had that legendary playoffs until the cup final this last year. Regular season-wise, though, he was pretty average at best last season. We'll see what happens. I'm going to give the goaltending a B- minus as of right now. We'll see if Bobrovsky is still able, to be, still able to be a good regular season goaltender. That'll be one of the biggest questions. Will that goaltending hold? Because it will have to be important early on in the year. To me, looking at this Florida Panthers team, though, they are still an excellent quality roster. And we'll see if that coaching is able to take them into the next step in the regular season. Of course, they got 92 points last year, just made the playoffs. They will need to be better than that if they're going to make the playoffs this season for sure. And that lag division, which is just crowded as all heck, it's going to be a battle. But to be having for the Panthers, the biggest question mark will be, can that defense survive with Eggblad and Montour gone? Eggblad, it looks like could be out a little bit longer than Montour, which is brutal for the Panthers. But that defense needs to stay strong. It needs to hold and it needs to be at least okay. That could really separate the Panthers' start of the season. And if the Panthers have a bad start, that could separate them from being a playoff team or not. As for the standings predictions, I have them getting around 95 to 99 points in the air, third in the Atlantic Division. I still see them being solid, improving on the regular season from last year, that forward group being better, the goaltending hopefully being a little bit better too in the regular season too, and the Panthers getting a slight jump. And this team is still a great roster for the playoffs too. And that's all that matters for this Panthers team, getting into the dance because we saw how much damage they did last season. But that is gonna be it for today, guys. Let me know in the comments down below do you guys see the panthers being a playoff team can they get past their defensive issues on paper are they still a team that can make the playoffs and do damage there let us know all your thoughts down below of course hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell here and join the season previews 32 teams in 32 days and share all the videos out there of all the hockey fans you guys know online we will see you in the next one make sure you drink some water have a fantastic day and i will see you in the next one goodbye